Friends, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. I say, Christ is risen. You say, he is risen indeed. And then we all say, Alleluia. All right, let's try it. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Friends, we gather here as disciples, as seekers, as sojourners on the first day of this week to celebrate the good news of the gospel that death does not have the last word, that love wins. And remember that no matter who you are, no matter who you love, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. We are so pleased today to welcome Maddox Johnson uh, to help us trumpet. And I did not know, also sing in the good news of resurrection on this beautiful day. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping with, on, with us online. Thank you for being here. Um, if you have given one of the beautiful uh, plants that are gracing our sanctuary before you today, uh, please take one with you. Um, and if you have a good home for one, um, they'll be much uh, droopier next week. So uh, feel free to help yourself to one of our beautiful Easter plants. If you're a guest of ours here today, we offer a special welcome and invite you to join us downstairs following worship for a um, somewhat abbreviated uh, coffee hour. Uh, my understanding coming into today was that there was not gonna be any so that everybody could get home and prepare their own Easter dinner. Uh, but when we do no coffee hour, there's actually more coffee hour than most churches have. So, uh, so please join us downstairs for a cup of coffee and some cake and, uh, um, and some fellowship time. Are there other announcements to share this morning? Let us continue in our worship.
Our call to community is printed in our bulletins. Let us read responsively. Out of the tomb of our despair, God's love burst <clears throat> forth, enfolding us in joy. Out of the bloody corpse of our destruction, God leads us to a new creation. Out of our bewilderment and fear, God creates a song to save the world. Out of the night of desolation, God has brought our life's bright morning star. Let us stand as you are able as we sing our opening hymn, number 215, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. Let us join together in our gathering prayer. O God, God of, of resurrected life, in the shadow of our death, reveal your life abundant. In the glimmers of your dawn, roll away the stone of our despair. In the bloody violence of our world, lead us with your promises of resurrection. In the radiance of our risen Savior, give us eyes to see the beauty of your peace. Amen. Alleluia. Amen.
Let us prepare ourselves to receive the good news as we pray together. At your word, God of life, the earth grows green and every creature springs to life. Recreate us too, we pray, by your holy word. As we receive the ancient good news, give us the new joy and justice of Easter, all death destroyed, all captives freed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. Let us listen for the word of God. And I will be reading from my mother's The Living Bible. Here on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, the Lord of hosts will spread a wondrous feast for everyone around the world, a delicious feast of good food with clear, well-aged wine and choice beef. At that time, he will remove the cloud of gloom, the pall of death that hangs over the earth. He will swallow up death 
forever. The Lord God will wipe away all tears and take away forever all insults and mockery against his land and people. The Lord has spoken. He will surely do it. In that day, the people will proclaim, This is our God, in whom we trust, for whom we waited. Now at last, he is here. What a day of rejoicing. Let us listen also for the word of God as it comes to us in the gospel according to Mark, beginning at chapter 16, verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, here is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Here ends the reading of the lesson. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. The gospel story most Christians hear on Easter Sunday is from John's gospel. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb alone finds the stone rolled away, runs to tell Peter and the disciple that Jesus loved, and they come running back, find the tomb empty, and they go home. The guys go home. Mary hangs back a little bit. She encounters the gardener there, who, of course, turns out to be Jesus, right? And he speaks her name, and she recognizes him, And she goes to tell the disciples this good news. In John's gospel, Mary Magdalene is the first evangelist. If we read from Matthew's gospel story, we would have heard about a great earthquake opening the tomb. We would have heard about an angel sharing the good news again to the women who were there instructing them to go back to Galilee. And we, when we hear from Luke, the three women find the stone rolled away. They encounter angels who tell them the good news. But when they go back to tell the others, they dismiss them as an idle tale. Peter runs back and finds it just as they said. And then Luke tells us he goes home amazed at what happened. As with much of Mark's gospel, 
His account of the resurrection is unsatisfyingly brief. Hearing this amazing news, the women flee from the tomb, seized by terror, and they said nothing, not a thing to anyone, for they were afraid. Period. Full stop. That's it. Now, some of you, if you were following along in your Bibles this morning, you might say, wait, Brad, mine has a little more to the story. Let me add that in. And that's exactly what happened over the years. They added stuff in. They talked about, oh, well, they finally did get around to sharing the good news. And Jesus did finally get around to appearing to them because, you know, the other gospel accounts had resurrection encounters with this Jesus, this risen Jesus. Mark's didn't have any of that at first. So your Bibles might say the shorter ending of Mark or the longer ending of Mark. But the earliest versions that we have of Mark's gospel end at verse 8. There were no post-resurrection appearances, no put your fingers in my hands and your hand in my side. No spreading the good news. It just kind of ends with a thud. In silence and in fear. That morning, the three women just thought they were going to put the finishing touches on this story. Tending to the hastily bodied or buried body of their friend. And they're wondering aloud to one another about one important detail. Who will roll away the stone? Who will roll away the stone for us so that we can fulfill our obligations? Who will roll away the stone for us so that we can finally say a proper goodbye? Who will roll away the stone so we can finish the story? But Mark, having brought us this far, just kind of drops us off in the middle of nowhere to fend for ourselves, to make up our own endings. Mark's gospel leaves us in a state of unfinishedness, causing tension between the expectation of something and wondering what happens next. What indeed happens next. Mark's gospel with its empty tomb and fearful silence seems remarkably incomplete. It wants us wanting more. Tell us more about what happened after that. Mark's Easter story, in our friend Richard Swanson's words, is all question and no answer. All question and no answer. So where do we go from here? Sometimes it's hard for us to see what's in front of us. Sometimes it's hard for us to see the way forward because there's something big right there. We don't know what to do with it. We don't know who's going to move it. It happens when we receive an unwelcome diagnosis, an unanticipated job change. You know what those are, right? The end of a relationship. It's hard to see what's right in front of us when 2,700 years later, the shroud that Isaiah writes about is still there. Death and tears are still a thing. 
It's hard to see what's right in front of us when the political discourse in our nation grows increasingly confrontational. It's hard to see what's in front of us when we are daily wondering what living is going to be like in this climate-changed, weather-weird world we are in. It's hard to see what's right in front of us when so many of God's children who are perceived to be different are marginalized, vilified, simply for being who they are. So who will roll away the stone? Mark's gospel starts with an invitation. You remember that? Way back in Epiphany, January. It starts out, follow me and I'll make you fish for people. I'll show you where the big ones are. It's really more of a command than an invitation, but we'll go with invitation today. Then about halfway through the story, he reminds them and us what following Jesus is all about. You want to follow me, he says? Well, here's what that means. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, then follow me. Mark's gospel story ends with that same invitation. He's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. He's going ahead. Follow. So friends, who will roll away the stone? Who will roll away that big thing right in front of us that we can't get around and can't get through? Who will roll away the stone? I hate to tell you, but I think from here on out, that's our work to do. That's on us. But thank God we have someone to follow. Amen. As we worship God in prayer, I invite you to name people and situations that should be in our prayers this day and through this week. I will share a joy with you. Uh, I know many of you are here for our Good Friday musical meditation, and um, uh, it went fabulously well beyond my wildest imaginations. Um, we also were um, blessed to uh, collect $1,160 that we will be given, giving to the Continuum Arts Collective, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, doing great work with young people who might otherwise not be able to afford an instrument or lessons. So that is a joy. Other, other joys and concerns today, Scott? We will keep Heather in our prayers. We rejoice that Tom is home from the hospital and um, we will keep him in our prayers as he continues his recovery. We will keep Yvette in our prayers. Priscilla. Priscilla. June. June. Dave Cuddle. Dave Cuddle. 
Andrea. Jane. Laura. Laurel. Matt. Matt, Michaela, and Jameson. We'll keep Stu in our prayers and all who are traveling this weekend. Mark, David, and Christy? Chris. Gaza, of course, yes. Let us pray. God of love and life and new beginnings. On this bright and beautiful morning, we praise you with glad shouts of alleluia and amen, with music and song and story and word. We praise you for the relentless possibility in your unending love a love revealed to us in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. In him you have exposed the futility of violence and hatred. In him you have broken the grip of death. In him you have given us the promise of new life. Today, we bring our whole selves to you in thanks and praise. Help us to make of this world a new creation. Help us to break open old, tired systems. Give us courage and persistence to be the builders of your righteous realm. Reveal in us and through us again and again and again and again the love that knows no end. Let there be joy in Jerusalem and peace among the nations in Gaza and the West Bank, in Israel and Ukraine, Sudan and Yemen. May rivers of justice and righteousness break forth through our nation, our cities, our towns. Let the sound of weeping and cries of distress be transformed to shouts of joy and laughter. Let infants go and grow and thrive. Let trans people live free from fear of persecution. At long last, remove the shroud that covers peoples and nations and make us, O oh God, bearers of healing and wholeness into the world. Let every person find a home and a welcome. Asylum seekers, immigrants, and refugees, safe and secure from violence, to enjoy the fruit of their labor. God of new life and promise and possibility, hear our prayer today for those who are in need of your unending love and your healing, life-sustaining presence. Pray for Heather and Priscilla, for June and Dave, Tom and Andrea, for Jane and Laurel, 
or Matt, Michaela, and Jameson, or Mark, David, and Chris, for Yvette. Pray for all those who travel, especially Stu this week. We pray that you return him safely to us soon. Hear now, O God, the prayers we hold in our hearts and lift up to you in silence. Hear these and all our prayers, Almighty God, for we lift them up to you in the risen one's name, who taught us when we pray to be bold and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have come to the time in our worship when we are invited to respond to what we have heard, what we have seen, what we have felt. Um, if you would like to make a gift to support the ministries of Second Christian Church, you may do so on the plates on the back table there as you leave. If you're worshiping with us online and uh, you would like to make a gift, you can do so on our website. Uh, but I'm going to, if, if you want to support something else today, uh, Charlie, is it okay if we throw a little more money on our gift to Continuum Arts Collective. So if you would like to make a gift, you weren't here on Friday, or you maybe felt like you didn't put enough in the plate on Friday, and you want to put a little more in, um, please uh, just put it in an envelope and write uh, CAC on the envelope, um, and uh, we will make sure it gets to the right place. And you can do that online if you would like also. Just note that your gift is to Continuum Arts Collective. Let us worship God with all that we are and all that we have.
Let us bless our gifts. God, who gives the increase, receive these gifts and multiply them for your kingdom. Continually renew life and love and generosity in us. Be glorified in us and through us. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 221, The Strife is O'er.
And now may the God who shakes heaven and earth, the God whom death could not contain, the God who lives to disturb and heal us, bless us with power and faith to go from this place and proclaim the gospel in all the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you.